Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Local Chat, episode number 15. Can you believe it already? And it's the 15th of April, 2021. Joining me today is a man who thinks books are just full of weird words. It's Ian Gibson. Yeah, it's just like, it's just one word right after the other. It's literally like tens of thousands of hundreds of thousands of words. Who, who has time to read that? Yeah, nobody does. Also joining me is a man who thinks that Psychonauts isn't a good game. It's Dave Davis. Get that slander out of here. <laughs> Get it out. I thought of a good introduction earlier, and I forgot exactly what I meant most. You like Psychonauts. <laughs> way to get the stab and folks if you didn't know we are a video game podcast where we talk about video games and news and i wave my magical finger and make things happen um we were figuring out some audio issues there was a lovely echo was in three it turns out uh we are going to talk about some hot 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 news before we talk about the hot hot news to talk about what we have been playing. That a hot song by David. David, what have you been playing? Ooh, you know, I have been playing a song game. I'm going to talk about that first. Perfect. Second. Is the piano supposed to still be on? No, nah, we should probably kill it right now. It's, it's, almost, <laughs> it's almost done. Oh, okay. I just never talk long enough for it to last. Don't question Oh, there it goes. I, just, I thought it ended before what you played. I didn't realize you. I thought you had like a button which made it like transition could, and like just cut. Over to the window to turn it down. Well, we're talking about technical. Will you're you're low again? I'm low yeah. again. Yeah. Is it, is it? Am I better now? No. How why did you do I, that, Will? Why am I low again? I didn't touch anything. I, I don't know. You're like five dB low. Oh, I can legitimately see I am low. That's. Why don't you just bump the gain on the on the Yeti? That's like even in uh OBS I'm low. Maybe this microphone's finally dying and I need to get a new one. <laughs> Woo! That, Yay. That's better. I, yeah, it's a little better. Okay. Yeah, a little better. Sorry everyone. Technical bit. Anyways, David, tell me about this musical. So, this is an indie game that just got a Kickstarter this past week. Um, and after, I guess it was a week ago. Uh, after they released the Kickstarter, and it, it's the game is called Unbeatable. Um, it looks fantastic. I very much, it's, it's like an anime rhythm game with original music that they wrote and uh, sing to and everything. Uh, looks super cool, super stylistic. Um, and I saw this game was like, I love rhythm games. I love Ost. I love Beat Saber. I, I was like, I need to play this. And they're like, hey, we're going to have a demo as soon as like the Kickstarter launches. Kickstarter launched. Demo got delayed because of issues. And then they released a demo this week. Uh, and I played a little while and it was janky and not great. And then they released a patch the next day, which fixed all of my issues. So I have been playing a bunch of this demo. There's only like five songs so far, and there's supposed to be like an open world thing that's not there. This is just the rhythm game part. And oh man, this is a good fucking game, guys. This is a good game. Looks great. This checks all my boxes. I, I haven't seen images of it. How does the how does the rhythm uh, can... uh so the basically you play a character who's in the middle uh for the demo, it's all in like a subway tunnel. Uh so you're in the middle and the beat comes at you from either the left or the right side sometimes both at the same time sometimes one at a time and essentially you have up and down and that's it really realistically you only have two buttons for this rhythm game uh but it has a lot of the normal rhythm game stuff it has hold notes it has um like oh, i forget what they're called where you just like mash the button for for certain parts it has um obstacles to dodge too which is interesting i don't usually see those uh, in this type of game and normal notes i'm trying to think of something it has ghost notes built in which is not usually a thing uh usually that's like something you have to turn on but there are some songs that have like few ghost notes um 
and it's still got some work to do um it's still a little buggy the some of the stuff isn't super obvious like even the colors right now are it's very difficult to play some of the maps and it relies a lot on memorization which isn't great um but they have like a discord where you can just go you can play the demo you can post feedback they have a couple channels one of them you can vote on things for them to do that they've identified already like to easily gauge preferences it's like hey thumbs up or thumbs down do you is this something you're interested in uh so cool they've been really responsive uh, i even reported a couple bugs in there that they fixed really quick like i couldn't go into the options menu to ch- uh i think i wanted to remove one of the filters they had, like a film grain filter that I was like i just don't want that and before they fixed it uh the whole game <laughs> and they fixed it in like a day so it was awesome uh i'm really enjoying it it's definitely got some some room i really like what i'm seeing so i'm I'm hyped for whenever this game actually gets released um their kickstarter is still up go to the unbeatable kickstarter uh see if it's your shtick if it is back it so we can get custom beat map editor because i want that for reasons it's all uh original music i assume yeah so right now it's all original music which is awesome and it's actually like good original music too it's it's like some of the original music even like beat saber which i love some of the original music in that game sucks um but so far the songs they released i I like all of them a lot gotcha so go check it out see if it's something you're interested in if so back it so i can get a beat map editor so we can make custom songs and stuff with definitely not pirated music because that would be wrong be wrong to do that very wrong uh no 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 uh other stuff i've been playing uh played life is strange for the first time which was a fun game to play strange have either of you played life is strange uh Uh, no i watched other people play life is strange well it was cool that's pretty much all i have to say about (laughs) that without spoiling stuff so (laughs) i'm not a big fan of like teen dramas yeah i mean i can see that i didn't have i'm also not a big fan and i thought it was in um just the way they handled a lot of stuff was interesting and i mean it's not so much teen it's like college it looks like teen but oh oh i didn't know that i thought it was teen it's like it's weird it takes place in like a high school with a dorm Mm -hmm. and everyone's like exactly 18 so it might as well be college I don't know why they're like, oh, it's a high school. I'm like, I don't understand. Um, It's weird. So that part's weird. I'm still honestly fuzzy on whether it was a high school or a college at this point. But like the main character, you're there for photography and stuff, which is, uh, I can't see that being high school. But at the same time, she's like going to a science class. I don't know. Whatever. They're all like 18. It didn't feel super teeny. It felt college-y to me most of the time. Um. I could just be me, but I thought it was pretty well written for the most part. I played through the whole game and there was only one glaring pro- plot hole, which for an entirely narrative timey-wimey game, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of time manipulation in that game. That's just kind of its whole shtick. Um, and it was cool being able to not have to replay the whole game to see the consequences of my choices. Mm-hmm. Because you, if you make a choice and you're like, ugh. I want to see what the other one is because that's not what I wanted to happen. You can just rewind, try again, and you can go back pretty far. Um, oh, yeah. oh, that's nice. So it's it's very nice. I, ha- I had a very good time just being able to see what the choices would be without having to replay the game from beginning to end. Uh, so that was cool. Like the characters for the most part. I didn't think there were any big twists really, other than it was a darker than I thought it was going to be. I think oh. towards chapter like I think it's chapter four. There's five chapters, and chapter four is just like, oh, oh, we're going real dark, real fast. Okie dokie. <laughs> 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 uh, so yeah, it definitely transitions out of teen drama around chapter four. Wow. Uh, so Ian, just start but, the game at chapter four when you play it. God. Don't do that. You'll be clueless <laughs> as to what is happening. <laughs> it was weird because like it wasn't a twist so much like it wasn't like oh here's this character came out of nowhere and like did a thing it was just like oh i didn't expect the thing that i knew was happening to be so dark 
<laughs> oh, this is about genocide now. Got it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not just killing one person. <laughs> just like that, I'm back on board. <laughs> Ian loves genocide. Uh, oh. I, I guess the other game I'm playing that I'm not far into yet is Horizon Zero Dawn. Like the entire save data team is literally playing this game now unplanned we all just kind of started playing it and then another person started talking about it and we all we it just changed and now we're all playing it i really want to play it because i think it's it's on the 19th it's free on playstation so that's what i'm yeah i already had it so it was kind of like whatever but i just hadn't started it but it's pretty fun so far it's definitely not as smooth as like ghost of tsushima with open world stuff but it's pretty good so far i like aloy so that's cool uh, I'm not really far enough to have any other opinion besides that. So, well, like, I think I'm like five hours into the or five or ten hours into the forty-hour open-world game. So, <laughs> I don't know what's happening yet. We just heard from the lovely David about his stupid games he's been playing. So now we're going to hear. <laughs> we're gonna... <laughs> now we're going to hear from Ian about the stupid games he's been playing. Ian, tell us all about it. Yeah, well, I've got some quick hits up front. First of all, the usual, the old reliable Valheim folks. We're still playing it. I OK, here's here's the problem is I feel like we have a server up. It's basically Will, Zach and I were making subpixel content for it. And I'm pretty sure I'm the only person playing. Um, and I'm <laughs> still chugging along. Will, it feels like you're ready to throw in the towel, but I, it's hard to tell. What's your feeling? I I just feel like I it was what I was describing on stream, which is I kind of want to just spend a couple hours playing the game, not. Not necessarily not on stream, but just like not I don't know. I like I feel like I'm not like with Minecraft, I would play it in the off hours and stuff, but for Valheim I'm just yeah. waiting for the stream to play it. Plus the last like I feel no desire to play it outside of the stream at all. Uh I can see that. Plus the last stream I lost all of my stuff, which was very annoying. Um so I logged in yesterday and i was like oh i should start getting all my stuff can back. we clarify though it is 100 percent your fault it had yeah. nothing to do with the game no 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 <laughs> i mean it did because i disconnected from the game i mean it did it to zach when he disconnected from the game which could yeah. be a fault of the game even though the first two times it didn't delete all my stuff yeah. um so that's kind of frustrating but like again that's not not the game's fault but i, I just haven't felt a huge desire to play it i think i'm i think i'm valheimed out a little bit that's fair. And we we talked about how we kind of we feel like that momentum would come back if there was either a big release or it's a year later and we go, remember Valheim? Let's play Valheim. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I definitely think that. I still love it. It's still a great game. Um yeah. but I also want to play other things. I feel like it's taken up like a not a stream spot, but like I guess yeah, I just want to play other things, you know? Yeah. But the thing is I'm not ready to let it go because there's two things driving me forward. One is that the tech tree, I don't want to say that the tech tree is very clear, but the tech tree does a really good job of driving you forward. You know, we were like, look, we know there's, we we just beat the poison boss. So now we get to go to this big new biome. Let's explore this biome. Oh, cool. There's new enemies we want to deal with, but we're not dealing with them very well because we don't have the gear. Okay, well, let's get the gear. How do we need the gear? We need to get the silver. We need to get, so it just does a really good job of constantly driving you forward towards something that is slightly out of reach. But if you work at it, you'll get there. And you'll be able to do it better in the future because you're teched up for it. Yeah. Um, and I think the other thing is there's only five bosses in the game right now. We've beaten three of them. The fourth one, we could probably beat next stream. And so it's like, I'm never really a person who's like, I gotta beat a game. But it's like, we're pretty close to beating this game. So I, that's the other part of it where I'm like, I don't want to give up because I feel like if we just put in a couple more hours, you know, four or five more streams, we could beat the game, which would be pretty crazy. Yeah, and I think we should set aside stream time to play it for a couple hours. I feel like putting it at night is what, like, it's like, oh, it's time to go to bed. Like, if we did, like, a 7 to 10 sort of thing, 
Yeah, and I mean, I hear you. But the other thing is that it is a dedicated server. It's up and running all the time. I've gotten into the habit of, usually I wake up like an hour and a half before I have to start work. So I get up, I have a little coffee, and then I start playing Valheim for like 45 minutes to an hour. So uh, I don't mean to throw you under the bus, but you not playing it in the off hours is 100% you because the game gives you plenty of opportunities to play no no i'm agreeing with you i'm saying i i don't want to play it in the off hours yeah i think part of it is figuring out what you want to do what drives you because for me it's like oh we have the big silver patch oh let me go mine that for a while or it's like you know this base camp it's not really secure so i'm just going to spend an hour building up defenses around it you know it's like figuring out those little tasks to drive you um, anyways, I, I continuing my, uh, tour of game pass and, uh, PlayStation plus and all sorts of other free services, games that I already have access to, but I've never touched before. And I played a little bit of maquette. Uh, I played about an hour of it, uh, it has a very good storytelling, great use of music. It's almost like, it's almost like a Tarantino use of music where it's just like, you have a scene, there's not really a score. And then it's just like, bam, pop song, you know? And I'm not, not I'm talking about like Katy Perry pop song, but it's just like popular song. It's just like, boom, here's just like regular boom. music. It's a hit, it's a bop, it's not well known, but it's a great song. It's not some score that's generic playing in the background for 90% of the movie. And so it'll just hit you with it. And it really emphasizes this love story that they're trying to tell. I don't think the puzzles are particularly well done. I'm not a big fan of the characters in the story, so I kind of dropped it after about an hour. But there is one thing about it that I really liked, which is I played it on a PS5. I believe it's a PS5 only game, uh, or at least I don't think it's on PS4. And it's interesting because it uses the PS5 hint tip system. And it actually does it pretty well. And this is my first time trying it where I would I would get stuck. I would press the PlayStation button. It would be like, hey, here's where you are. You would click into it and it'd be like, do you want some <coughs> you want some tips? You say yes. <laughs> and it goes like, do this, then do this, then do this. And there's a 30 second video clip you can watch of that. And it was oh. crazy because I was literally about to look it up on my phone and I was like, wait a minute, doesn't this have this thing? And I and it's just boom, it's right there embedded. That's actually so I think great. it's it's cool. Yeah, that's that's next gen tech. <laughs> I love that. Um the other games I've been playing, Real I actually just played is on PS4, but it was only free with PS5. That's why. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Oh. Um, the other two I played about a half hour each. Hot shot racing. Um, just kind of a nice weird little drifty, boosty racing game on Game Pass. I also played Cluster Truck. Have you guys played Cluster Truck? That's been out for a year or two. Is that yeah. the thing where you're hopping on top yeah, of the for... truck? I've seen it, I haven't played it. It's neat. It's it's very it's yeah, it's a great job of like you can tell that's somebody was like, hey, check out this weird little mechanic. I did in this tech demo and you're like, this is neato. This would make a cool little game. And then they just made a cool little game out of it. You know, they added on details to it. They added a lot of aesthetics on top of it. So it works. And you're just like, crap, crap, crap. <laughs> you know, it's great. Um, but the game that I have played for five and a half hours this week is professor Layton and the diabolical box. Have you guys played any professor Layton games? I know nothing. I have, what they are what they are about. <laughs> I have that one. You don't know what professor Layton is. Oh wow, <gasps> David, that's surprising. Mm-hmm. So their their game is originally for the DS, but now they're available on iOS and Android. Where it's like, it's kind of like Victorian England era, and he's and he has a little boy with him, and he's a professor with his tall hat, and he's just like, oh, Dick, perhaps we should solve a little puzzle. And then there's like they have like little brain teasers and stuff, and you're solving them, and it's, it's things like here's a weird piece of wood. You only have one cut. How do you make it so that it comes back together as a square? You know, or the blue house is next to the power line. The green house is further than the blue house. Which house is which? Things like that. It's just a great little puzzle game. Yeah. Um, so I've played a Professor Layton game before. I got the urge a couple days ago to play another Professor Layton game. So I, it's crazy. They're like a lot of them are on Android and iOS and they run beautifully. They run a lot better on the DS because I, I think it's like the original assets, but there's just like crystal clear quality to the image now. Um, so I started play, playing Professor Layton in the Diabolical Box. I was really enjoying it, but I had this weird thing where, so I've played a Layton game before, played it and beat it. And then I started playing a second Layton game, but then I stopped. I think I just got bored of it. And so I started playing Diabolical Box recently. 
and it felt familiar. And I was like, oh, I must have played some of this game, but I can't really remember. And I can't remember how much of it I played just like an hour or two. Like, have you guys ever had that where you start playing a game and you're like, oh, I, this is very familiar. I think I've played yeah. this before. I did that with maybe something super recently where I picked it back yeah. up and I swore I had never played it before. And like the entire first mission, I'm like, man, they ripped this off of something. And I had just yeah. played it before. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah. I have it sometimes with older games where I like see a game or I start playing it and I'm just like, wait a minute. When I was, I, I think I saw this game when I was like five years old, you know, <laughs> in like some magazine or something. Um, so anyways, I've been playing it and I, like I said, I played about five and a half hours so far this week and I had deja vu the whole time and I got to a major story beat recently and I realized this is the same stupid latent game I've already played. <laughs> I've already played this game and beat it. <laughs> I, I wanted to play a brand new latent game, and instead I'm just playing the same stupid game over. <laughs> There's like six or seven of them in the series. Oh. I got so mad. Five and a half hours until you realized, yeah. dude, that's impressive. Because I was like, I think it's because I just completely, for like, I what I remember of the latent game when I originally played it was like the back half because the back half gets a little crazy right and the rest of it is i'm not saying the story doesn't matter but the rest of it is just like puzzles so is that i the thought one on the was... train yeah this is the one okay. that starts on a train and then it goes to a weird village and so i was playing it and i was just like well this may just be like the first hour or two that i tried on the second game and i never really liked it but now i'm thinking there never was a second game <laughs> i just played one game all the way through and it was only like eight years ago that i played this it wasn't even that long ago and the story is great. There's nothing wrong with the game. I just completely forgot the details of it until I got to a major story point. And I was like, oh, no, this is the same stupid game I've already played. Uh, so next week, I'll be talking about Professor Layton and the Curious Village, which is what I actually want to play. Because <laughs> I haven't played that one. I um, um, It's funny you say that because I... It's very funny. So I own the Diabolical Box on Nintendo DS. And I yeah. played through it on Nintendo DS. I don't know if I beat it. I think I did. I just can't remember. So recently, uh, I also bought the Diabolical Box on my phone because I was like, oh, Professor Layton. I played the one on the DS. Oh, this one has a train in it. I love trains. So I downloaded it and played it. And it it's a little lesser than yours because I don't think I ever beat it. But I played those first like six puzzles and I was like, I've played this before and went and checked. Yeah. So I can't believe that game has been the first 50 two puzzle. people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, I think in our defense, I, I wanted to figure out which one I hadn't played. And so I went to the Wikipedia article for like the first two or three and I read the plot synopsis. And somebody has put in way too much work and made like five paragraph plot synopses. So I'm reading it and going, I don't remember any of this from any of these <laughs> games like I, there were plot points i remember from playing the games and i couldn't find them in any of the synopses i'm just like what is? it's just like and then and then flora does this and then the dog does this and then they go to this and this and i'm just like oh my god but i realized what i really should have done and i confirmed this today was when i asked myself which game did i play previously on the ds i should have just gone to my ds games and looked them up because there was diabolical box <laughs> the whole freaking time <laughs> Wait, uh, so you, okay you had the ds games you could have just looked i could have checked but instead <laughs> i decided to check wikipedia and their bad plot but yours are on display mine are at least in a <laughs> <I know>. box <laughs> i know i know wow at but least hey, i got duped what? by a train <laughs> <laughs> David, I'm going to give you a homework, assi a homeless homework assignment. You need to play, play it. Right. They're fantastic. They're very, very good. They're good. Uh, I highly they're good. I believe you. I just have a large backlog, and that doesn't sound like hey, a game. Hey, we only need to hear about your backlog. Let's discuss. It should uh, be. <laughs> it's very large and round. <laughs> anyway, that's all I've been playing. That's, um, that's a lot of Professor Layton over and over again. Oh, man, now I want to boot up Professor Layton and his little boyfriend. Oh, I'm sorry. I came out wrong. That's wrong. <laughs> very feeling. His little boy, who is his friend. So there's, I don't actually, know that it's sounding any What's that better? <laughs> That's in the game. That's canon. I should have screen counted because there's this weird convo where he's like, hello, professor, is this your son? And he goes, no. And he goes, well, then how do you know this boy? And they're like, 
ah, he helps me solve puzzles. <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> excuse me, what? And he goes, he's not my son. He's my dot, dot, dot friend. And I was just like, what is happening? I want like Perfect a TV show where they're like, you, Professor Layton, you never solved the puzzle of our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Pedo and the questionable relationship. <laughs> Is that one on a train? Because I'll play it. <laughs> oh, okay. There's a lot of trains and tunnels in that one. Let's move on. Um, move I have oh, been no. playing Valheim. We already talked about it. Uh, Chris and I have been streaming from the office. We started playing Martian Gothic Unification. Um, good, uh, not good friend. I, I would say he's a good friend, even though he doesn't know me. Uh, <laughs> this mouth, the same <laughs> phrase. So, what? I don't know why I said good friend. <laughs> Anyways, uh, one of the people who is the impetus behind scan lines, his name is Zombiever. He runs the website Zom's Lair. Uh, he makes modern executables for retro games, like old PC games. So when you run the executable, it boots up a quick virtual machine and loads you into the game. They're great. Uh, He made them for a bunch of games we played on scan lines. I I had emailed him about games way back when. Anyways, I went back to his website because I was like, oh, I should stream more stuff. And he most recently did Nightlong Union City. And I wish he had done that a long time ago before Ian and I spent literally hours trying to patch that game and figure uh-huh. stuff out. That's um, right, because we got to a bug where it would crash every single time and yes. plus you had your hardware configuration set up properly. Oh, it was awful. Um, we So now we can realistically probably finish that game without no, a bunch of butt work. Um, so anyways, <laughs> they also had Martian Gothic Unification, which is another game I'm trying to get working. So this is a sort of resident evil style game takes place on mars uh you are sent to mars three of you to figure out what happened to this vita base um excuse me well i'm watching this gameplay this is literally just resident evil one with a sci-fi thing on top of it yeah it's really cool the story and background is really cool uh your characters are separated because the message they got sent was that uh, people can't be together because whatever's there like hunts people in packs or whatever. It said, it said, beware being together. And so you can just flip through these three different characters at any time. You send items through these vac tubes and everything. Really fun game. Uh, I handed the controller to Chris. He died. And then we lost <laughs> all of our progress. So I'll probably never play it again, perfect, but perfect. I thoroughly enjoyed the time I spent with it. Um, then we started playing the saboteur which i always thought was just like a world war ii sort of gta game which it is but that game is very horny um it is it is i so there was a nudity option and at first i turned it on and i was like oh it probably isn't that bad but then i was like you know what just in case we're streaming this on twitch i'll turn it turn it off so there's no nudity and i guess no nudity to them means tiny little stars on nipples for women because it was go and watch (laughs) today's stream and the other stream because it is just full boobs and i was i was like the only saving grace is that this is like xbox 360 graphics it's not like like hd or anything so at least we're good with it so and we discovered today you can watch burlesque dances and it's not like some cute cutscene. it's like a three minute dance of this like sexy lady and i was like what is this game besides the sexiness the game is that right amount of janky b game so i can just like run over people who are the objective people when you run into a cow with a car it explodes into meat chunks perfect um okay yeah, I, that, I yeah. highly recommend going watching the stream today uh, because it was very funny. Uh, it was a great time. And it's just like, it's got bad accents. Anyways, I think I'm going to keep playing it, keep streaming it because it's rough in all the right ways that I like. Um, besides. Uh, well, I've, I've noticed that you've been going through kind of like a like, like late 90s, early 2000s bad shooter track. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll look. I'm going to put my foot down. The next game you guys are playing needs to be Red Faction. Red okay. Faction was good. I have it. It's fantastic. and it, But it also fits mechanically within that space. It so does, you need but is it B-movie enough for, for Will? 
it's it's kind of like well it starts out pretty it starts out kind of b movie because it's just like a total recall ripoff at the start but then it gets very very good so you should totally you should you should totally play that it's great okay i'll put it on the list um <clears throat> besides crappy games be the same as your um your jrpg list because i happened to come across a document on google drive <laughs> it was called will first jrpg and there's 60 games on there will <laughs> how are there 60 firsts it's just it's all the just... games for the series that i'm eventually gonna get to <laughs> Okay, I. Look, I'm just take kidding. You 60 I, that, years. No, 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 <laughs> no. I started a list before we even started of all the like JRPGs people recommend, and then I was putting in how long to beat so I could eliminate games that were too long to ever try to stream, and then I was figuring out what games I could stream important story moments and then play the games offline, um, and all that sort of stuff. Because Chrono Trigger yeah, sucks, and I don't want to finish playing it. <laughs> I've done a quick calculation here, and on this list, you have about 70% of the games populated with time to beat. It's about 1,440 but, hours total of gameplay. I know, but they're not for streaming. It's just I'm, just... I'm just teasing you, but at the same time, the list is called Will's First JRPG Games, and there's 60 JRPGs on there. Are you crazy? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's because the name of the show is, is funny. You know, look, I'm just going to control a delete. Red no, fetch. don't touch don't that list. <laughs> Very <laughs> important. That's also a personal list where I can know what JRPGs are good and what suck like Chrono Trigger. Um, also, what made you hate Chrono Trigger. I thought I, I was really enjoying it. I was enjoying it, but I told, you know what? I'm, he doesn't watch this show anyways. It's mostly Chris's fault because Chris <laughs> is a person who... Whenever he's doing something, he wants to stop doing it and go away. Like, half the time we tried to stream Chrono Trigger, I was like, oh, we'll play for, like, two or three hours. He's like, oh, I gotta go by 7.30. I'm like, well, I won't play Chrono Trigger. So, I think the downfall of Chrono Trigger for me was I only played it in, like, hour and a half chunks. And it wasn't yeah. that fun. And then I told Chris, I was like, hey, now that we're unemployed, let's play it for, like, four or five hours. He was like, well, if we're gonna do that, why don't we just start a new JRPG? And I'm like... No, I want to finish, finish the first one. So now we're having yeah. that argument. So play a Tales <sighs> game. You can play it at the same time. Play it together. Call oh up. yeah, let's play Tales of Chrono Trigger oh. dot com forward slash game I've been playing. Dragon Quest only Builders <laughs> Two. Dragon Quest Builders Two. Okay, oh. I reached the end of the demo, and the Switch told me so. I had. I estimated 15 hours last week. It was 10 hours. I was exactly 10 hours in the demo. And I went to finish the first island. And the game's just like, hey, yeah, you're going to fight this boss now. So uh, you want to buy the game? And I'm like, oh, it was like 1130 at night. I was like, okay, I'll buy the I game. Kinda, I know. I know. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like I know we were we were joking about it, but I feel like that's a, actually kind of a good strategy for a game like that. Where if you're gonna make it to that buy the game screen, you're too invested not to buy this. Game. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like ten hours. So I bought the game, and it was taking forever to download. So I was like, okay, I'll just go to bed. Woke up the next morning, uh, beat the boss, did all the stuff, finished the island. They sent me back. So you're on the main island, and then you go to like different ones to do good deeds. So I went back to the original island, played a little bit more, stopped. I have not played it since, like, <laughs> Saturday. What did they they got you. And I was like, you know what? They ten got me, but 10 hours a game. So I have, like, I think I have 12 in there now. But the problem is, now the new game doesn't show me. So I had 10 hours in the demo, according to Switch. So now the new game doesn't tell me how many hours I have in it until there's yeah. until Switch is ready to tell me. Um, so I'm slowly playing that because it's that's a good like I'm bored and I want to listen to a podcast and also play it's a video a game. game. I played a demo of it the last E3 that happened and it was pretty in, pretty interesting. Yeah, uh, I genuinely enjoy it. Uh, I'm yeah, and this is part of my Dragon Quest Renaissance where I'm really enjoying Dragon Quest stuff and the slimes and things have the cutest dumbest names. Also, this game was localized very recently because they have things like oh that's lit how you doing fam and like all that sort of stuff in this video you game you idiot just play pokemon you're describing pokemon pokemon again. is bad and stupid and <sighs> dragon quest is better than pokemon i'm not so i'm not arguing pokemon. against that 
but Perfect. you're like it has cute little things and it has no it doesn't transmission things and it has cute little enemies what do you think pokemon is with it's stupid little things stupid i hate <laughs> pokemon god anyways folks it's time for the news and as always the news theme is sung by our good friend zach uh i actually lost the recording to the news theme so i asked zach if he could come in live and do this so i'll see if i can get him on here uh let me just okay here he comes oh wait wait not yet okay here he is okay zach's in the call zach whenever you're ready We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? I don't know how he does it. Thank you, Zach. Bye. Thanks, Zach. Bye, Zach. Okay, he's out of here. That was great. <laughs> I can't believe he did that. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's time, <laughs> it's time for the Why? news. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, well, now I got it recorded again. It's great. Um, who that works seamlessly, uh, folks. A lot of stuff happened this week. Um, Ian, I'm gonna make you start because you well, let's just talk about it. I feel like this is the big one, and quite frankly, <laughs> folks, I don't know how to feel about it. We need to talk about this. Uh, another blockbuster article by Jason Schreier of Bloomberg. Uh, Sony's obsession with blockbusters is stirring unrest within PlayStation Empire. So, let me see if I got the big hits. Which is basically that the team that made Days Gone, pitched Days Gone 2, were rejected and have now been tasked with making a Last of Us remake. And it's making people inside Sony upset. That's not right, David? No. What's, uh, so what's, what's so the run? The, the Days Gone people pitched Days Gone 2, were told <laughs> no, and then they were forced to make an Uncharted game. And then a bunch of people high up in that company left. And then after a while, they were like, hey, can we not make Uncharted? Because this kind of sucks. And Sony was like, yeah, that's cool. But you can't make Days Gone 2. So you got to figure out something new. Because that's somehow less risky than Days Gone 2. Yeah. Oh, but where does The Last of Us remake come in? Oh, okay. So The Last of Us remake. There was the second studio that was spinning up in San Diego. Because they already have, mm -hmm. I think it's just called San Diego Studio down there. That does MLB the show. They had a small, like, 30-person studio there that was, like, support. That was sizing up to make the last of us remake and then the naughty dog people got brought in to oversee the project since they're like the original creators which always goes well when you have the original creators overseeing a remake they definitely mm -hmm. don't take over the projects so they ended up taking over the project and now that's oh. san diego studio i think is defunct and but but naughty dog is making the last of us remake. now naughty dog is making the last of us remake they're leading it anyway yeah, and I think I think um, there's there's a lot of editorial in this article. Jason Schreier basically saying that Sony is focusing too much on these blockbusters and not enough on new IPs or smaller IPs. Um, I don't I don't know. I mean, look, I think Last of Us remake is a stupid idea um, because Last of Us is not a good series, but also because you don't need a remake. Um, but also, I mean, I feel like I don't feel like I can fault sony that much for focusing on its blockbuster titles when that is basically its entire content strategy versus microsoft microsoft is just like we have a bunch of games they're pretty cheap none of them are exclusive none of them are particularly fantastic but here they are they're very easy to play and Sony's strategy is just look we'll let you play ps4 games on the ps5 we're not gonna let you play ps3 games we're not gonna let you play ps2 games we're not gonna make, let you play ps1 games we're gonna focus on exclusive ps5 titles blockbuster triple a and i just i don't understand how this is last of us remake is a surprise but them focusing on these big budget titles it doesn't seem like a surprise to me what about you guys um yeah i mean it doesn't surprise me that <clears throat> that's kind of what their strategy is what is annoying is like them seemingly playing willy-nilly with people's jobs and livelihood i'm not saying pe those people didn't sign up for that but it's like it if i was someone who was ready to get into the games industry uh i wouldn't be like pining to work for a sony game if i knew that's how risky it was 
Um, but I think it's just coupled with a lot of like, there's a lot of like rumors of Sony, not rumors, but like them seeming to fall behind, not in console sales or anything like that, but like Microsoft's so pleasing with everything in their fan base. It's like, oh, you want old games? Here's old games. Oh, you want tons of games for a really cheap price? Here's a ton of games for a really cheap price where Sony seems to be coming out like, oh, I, we're the rich people's brand where we've been around for a while oh you want to, oh we'll bless you with some some blockbusters and some so oh. being apple and microsoft's being android right now basically yeah yeah <laughs> and that's their business strategy but it's just it's it doesn't send the right messages to consumers and i i think that's the issue i'm worried about yeah. some of the smaller games because like japan studio is basically non-existent now um They've yeah. pretty much been torn apart. And I liked a lot of their games, so I'm really sad to see them basically be gone. Um, and I'm concerned for the livelihood of the people who made, what is it, Media Molecule? People who made Dreams? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm very concerned that that studio will remain open or not, um, even though Dreams wasn't a game for me. But like I, I like that they have games like that. I like Pixel Opus who made, um, oh, guys, the graffiti game. Oh. Like a year or two ago, Concrete Genie, Concrete Genie. Oh, Concrete. Um, like I really like Concrete Genie. It was great. Um, I hope that this isn't signs that those games are going to go away because I like those games. So, and I didn't like Last of Us Part Two. I liked Part One. Um, Part Two did not enjoy. And I, if they are going to give me more of Last of Us Part Two, I don't want it. So it's at that point where, like Ian said, like microsoft's doing a lot more pro-consumer stuff it's at the point where like if someone's getting into the new gen and they're like oh what should i buy i'm probably gonna tell them xbox yeah 100 percent. i mean for the for the value alone yeah it's it's console game pass don't don't think about it's buying an xbox it is getting you access yeah. to console game pass games yeah 100 percent yeah. so I, I i think i think the other thing and, and granted i'm not a huge fan of sony's catalog right now but if they are starting to kill off some of those smaller sprinkling exclusives um, and they're leaning more on the tent poles, they don't really have a lot of tent poles. You know, they, they do compare to like how many Nintendo's putting out. But like, what, what do they got? They got God of War. They got Last of Us. They have, I guess, Ghost of Tsushima or whatever that studio is going to do next. They have Gran Turismo, but that's like a once every six, seven year game. You Uncharted, technically. Yeah, Uncharted. You can't can't consider Gravity Rush because that was Japan Sony. So that's the thing is if they're starting to lean on these tent poles. Yeah, it sounds like, like Days Gone wasn't a tent pole. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah. But I, I think uh, just thinking about that is you can't rely on those because Gears of War was a Microsoft tent pole. It's not anymore. It died out. They mistreated Halo, so it's not really a, it's as much of a tentpole anymore. So you can't lean solely on what you currently have as tentpoles. You got to grow some new tents. This is a terrible analogy. <laughs> you gotta, grow your tents. You got to you got to you got to start you know putting some risks out there to, to grow the next big franchises. And if they're focusing too much on what they've got right now and not doing enough risks on the future, then that's going to come back to bite them. Yeah. And so exactly I feel what like, happened to Microsoft. Exactly. Yeah, and it's just, I don't know. But the other part of it is, you know, it feels like there's a lot of, I don't know, there's still a lot of fanaticism around PlayStation. And they still have come up with some fantastic exclusives out of nowhere. So this could, I'm not going to say this is false reporting, but this could just be a little bit of sensationalism. Who knows, maybe things are fine and they've got studios in the wings ready to come in with great exclusives. Like another Kojima game. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, saw the rumor that Xbox has the next Kojima game, right? Yeah, yeah. But then I believe the it was it was either today or recently that Mark Cerny did yes. a live stream and he had Kojima stuff in the background. <laughs> yeah, so it was. I, it was uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about that. Um, <laughs> oh, I'll mention it briefly. Uh, David, what do you want to talk about? Oh man. Um let's i'll continue down the playstation route the first major ps5 system update um first play, playstation system update came out they're like 
hey, cool, we have some more storage options for you. Everyone, including me, got excited and were like, ooh, finally, we can put the SSDs in our PlayStation 5s and have more storage. Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> you can't. Uh, the new exciting storage option is you can now take a PS5 game and put it on an external hard drive Woo! that you cannot play it from. Yep. Sorry, they're so excited about that. So exciting. I mean, to be fair, for people who have data caps, which was me up until like a month ago, um, same. it's still good news because if there's a game you know you're going to come back to that you need to make room for, you can put it on an external and not have to re-download a 100 gigabyte game or like 300 if it's freaking Call of Duty. So like on, on that front, it's good news. I'd much rather... They just get the SSD support out. It's been six months since the console came out. I can't believe it's not out yet. And I think the other thing is that there are commercial drives that fit the yeah. standard, or uh, I don't think they've officially yeah. said the standard, but that fit that speed standard. Fit the speed standard, yeah. So the, there's like both the speed and the size to fit in the slot and everything too. But it, it sounds like there's external drives for it. Even when the PS5 was coming out, they're available. They're just very expensive. Um, which is going to remain yeah. true. But Xbox has it. And yeah, it's like a $200 yeah. stick, but it's a terabyte of memory and you it's, don't and have to keep f- uninstalling games. It's a very fast drive. So, yeah. You know. Yeah. So, I mean, PlayStation is just behind on this. Um, yeah. There are a lot of like social enhancements in this update too that I don't super use because I pretty much just use Discord for all my social stuff. Um but from what I've heard from some other people that do use it, they're excited for the changes to the social stuff. Um, some fixes to trophies, which are horrible at the moment. So <laughs> any fixes to trophies, I'll be happy with. They literally downgraded the entire experience of trophies in every way, shape, and form. So any fixes to that UI. The PS5 UI is horrible. I yeah. absolutely hate it. I, I so booted bad. mine up for the first time since moving, and I was like... How do I do anything? How do I see things? And also, I booted it up and nothing loaded. Like, like oh. it, everything was just empty husks of panels. And I had to re- nice. do a system restart. And I was like, how do I turn this... Con-? Like, I don't know why they wouldn't have kept the hold the... Press the button to bring up I the menu. That so much. If they don't change that with the next system update, I will be shocked. Every time no I hold it down and nothing happens, and then I go, oh, yeah, you have to tap it. So I tap it, and it's this... Oh, it's so, over. And also, yeah. why... Sometimes I just want to go see like the downloads menu, even though I'm not downloading something. Like I just want to know what updated. And when you hit that thing, it's not there unless you're actively downloading something. And I'm oh. like, what? Okay, unless they've that. changed that recently, but... I was always like, I just want to see what game updated or like anything. Yeah, I never checked that, but I understand what you mean. <laughs> it's oh, and I, I'm someone who didn't like the PS4 or PS3. I, I I'm not a fan of the what's it called the like retro arch style. Is it was it XBMC? I'm not a fan of that. Yeah, like, I think they UI call it, like, style. the crossed UI where yeah. it's like you're going left to right and then you drill down. It's and, it's okay. It's just I feel like Xbox surpassed them with the Xbox yeah. One. Yeah, and I I think I think Sony's is technical in a way that's annoying. Versus yes. Microsoft's <laughs> is simple, but it's not simple in a way that's annoying. Like I yeah. would like more options on Xbox, but Sony's is like in a weird way. So I, I'm glad they're at least working towards it. But I agree, David. I I think it needs a lot a lot of work. And what they help. did was. I mean, they went backwards in a lot of places, which is just like, I don't understand. Like I'm going to use trophies as an example because I've been dealing with them recently, but like it used to just be you click on the trophies, you see a summary. If you want to unhide a trophy, you hit one button and it'll unhide it. You can see what the Uh requirements were. Now you have to like scroll through a sideways menu that cuts off the description of the trophy for the most part. And Why? to unhide the thing, you have to click on the trophy, or I guess press the button on the trophy, open up a new menu that shows you the full trophy name, and then hit a second button to then unhide the trophy name. And I believe it then asks you if you want to unhide it and you confirm, which is way too many steps when I just want to see how many of the fucking thing I have to do. That's yeah. It. I I think the best thing Xbox did 
with the uh, Xbox One generation is when you got the achievement, it told you the name of the achievement and then it blinked out and it told you what the description of the achievement was. So when you got it, you knew what you did to get it. Like you could immediately yeah. read it. And yeah, they I always do thought okay that was okay with great. the ones you unlock. It's the ones that I haven't unlocked yet and I want to yeah. see what I'm missing that are hard. And like they said, yeah. there's trophy tracking and I haven't really seen that support for like any games. So. I think it's a new yeah. PS5 thing that devs have to actually implement uh, yeah. or do and, updates for. Yeah, and and so far it doesn't seem like there is there is a strong uh, expectation of devs to do that. So it's just kind of an option in, yeah. and that's. It's yeah. not like Xbox side where they're like, no, you have to have trophy tracking if yeah, you want yeah. the trophies. Yeah, you yeah. have to do it this way. So I, yeah, it's just it's kind of weird, you know. I, I it's it's funny because behind the scenes playstation has kind of been in a weird place the last couple of years because they've been doing some weird like restructuring and moving people around doing stuff like that so you know i feel like they came into the ps5 generation if you don't look at the specifics they were they were they were on the front foot you know they, mm. they blew xbox out of the water with the ps4 they weren't making major changes with the ps5 which is it's okay but then Xbox comes out of nowhere with Game Pass towards the end of last generation and is just throwing haymakers left and right. Yeah. And it's like Sony, it doesn't feel like they're prepared for this and their response has been tepid or in the wrong direction. And meanwhile, meanwhile, Microsoft is out there giving away Sony built games for free <laughs> on launch day. <laughs> and it's like, man, it's so good. Whew. Um, Yeah. They definitely need some work. Uh, moving on, I wanted to talk about, uh, mostly because it's the one thing I watched this week, was the Resident Evil showcase that happened earlier today. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. In So in the pre-show, they showed off that Pragmata game again. It was just the trailer from E3. That's Do you remember? It's the one with the spaceman in New York City. Yeah. And there's the little girl. And everyone oh, thought it was like a Kojima, Kojima game. game. Yeah. So... I, I mean, as far as we know, it's not. It's a Capcom game. But they show the trailer again, and then I haven't gone back to check, but at the end of it, it flashed 2022. I don't know if that was there back at E3. It must have been 2019. So I think that was just updated with a date. So if anyone's really looking forward to that, uh, based on a crazy trailer, then there you go. Uh, I mean, it's like more. It's- it's got the look of a Kojima game, and it, but it's got actual substance to yeah. it. So I'm interested. Yeah, because Metal Gear Survive has so substance good. yet. <laughs> well, it's not a Kojima game, so it does. <laughs> <laughs> also, Survive wasn't a Kojima game, was it? Oh, no, I it meant... It, it, no, but that was a good game, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> not a good one. Um, off the bat, so they... Obviously, a lot of people who work at, at Resident Evil and Capcom are Japanese and speak Japanese. So they cut to a guy who spoke what? Japanese and they had English subtitles for the man speaking Japanese. And then they had an English audio translator for the man speaking Japanese, but the man speaking English and the subtitles reading English were by two different people. So it was, it was two different people translating. Oh, they, were they were not matching at all. And I it was <laughs> my brain wanted to explode. <sighs> But it also yeah. made me be like, oh, that word he said can mean upcoming and also coming soon. Like, it's you can yeah. tell where the trans. So it's interesting, but I just wanted, I was like, stop. That stop speaking. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. Maggie has a habit of just picking just like really stupid shows on Netflix to watch. <laughs> and a lot of the times they're like for, they're like German made historical dramas about Rome or something like that. And so what they'll do is they will have the dub, but the dub has to match the timing so you'll have the dub is oh. english but then the subtitles are like from the original script or whatever so basically the english subtitles don't match the, oh, the english dub and it's just like i don't want to i don't no. want to do this i don't want to do that this sounds- um so there's also a new resident evil 8 trailer i'm looking forward to that game i got to go back and finish seven because we started playing that on stream try to finish seven before eight comes out um they also there's two new demos coming out and they're coming out early for PlayStation 4 and 5 players. Next week is the castle demo where you can spend 30 minutes in a castle and it's only available for 8 hours. And then the week after that... Wait, what? 
Yes. <laughs> it's only awesome. available for eight hours? Oh yes. Awesome. But you can preload. And then the week after that is a village demo that is Wait. 60 minutes. Wait, and you on only on. get that for eight hours. So are these demos... Like if you don't play them within the eight hours, you're you're I done. I assume or... so. It's okay. PT. You have to actually you have to play them, not yeah. just download them. Yes, because yeah. you can preload them whenever. Um, and then well, that's so mean. <laughs> I kind of the... like it though. <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting. It's like, like, if the time zone doesn't line up, or you have to work that full eight I hours, know, you're right? just done though. So like, that's, the, that's the mean. Yeah, but at the same time, like these demos are not to sell the game. They know they've already just, sold the game, so they're just like, let's like, just mess with people. <laughs> just make you it know? twenty-four hours. From like, what I can tell, <laughs> is both of those two demos are available the the third week before the game comes out, and they're available on all platforms except Switch, uh, where the game's not coming to. They're available on all platforms, and they're available till launch. So it's only the ones that you can play early are available for eight hours, but I what don't. If? What it's if? What if? Weird. I know. Like they had to put what if? So much development. They were trying to say it in. That. I had to look it up afterwards <laughs> to figure out why. What if? What if? You could download the demo and you can play it whenever you want, but you're only allowed to play it once, <laughs> and then after that it locks you out. I, I so think so because you can only play for sixty minutes. But what I mean is, like, like you sit down, you play the demo, and you can't restart it. And if you die, you're done with the demo. Oh, there's so been games like, like that before. Yeah, that'd be great. That would be, that'd be cool. It was. Co- I'd just be more into that. That's a I'd Kojima idea that, of a it's game, just like, like, oh, you can play it one time, and then that's yeah. It. yeah. See, that's that's why I kind of like this because they're they're playing with it a little bit, and they're not super relying on it to sell copies. They're just like, we know we have a crazy rabid fan base, so let's kind of play with them a little bit and do some crazy stuff here. Yeah. Um. So that's interesting. I, I'm very much looking forward to that game. Um. The, they teased Mercenaries mode is back, which I think was a thing in 5. I don't think it was in 7. It's like a speedrun arcade mode. So, like, everyone has health bars. You get points. You get power-ups. You get to go to the shop and everything between, like, levels and stuff. Um, seems kind of cool. Um, they also announced there's an anime based on Resident Evil 4 uh, coming to Netflix uh, later is this year. From the, is that different from the already announced anime uh i'm not sure there's an announced movie which they said had finished uh filming and now they're working on the cgi oh, I'm uh, just gonna look it up. there is a dead by daylight update coming uh they said there's more on that on some dead by daylight stream in june and finally Wait, they are bringing capcom? resident what you say is dead by daylight a capcom game uh no but they're crossing over resident evil stuff for the 25th anniversary oh, okay real, real quick the the anime they talked about today is that called Resident Evil Inf- Infinite Darkness? Yes. Okay, yeah, that's the one that's already been announced before. Okay. For Netflix. Yeah. Um, oh, maybe it was the date they were announcing then. That's fair. And then finally, Resident Evil 4 Oc- for the Oculus 2 is coming out. Uh, it's in first person and it actually looks kind of neat, uh, but uh, I don't know, it's Resident Evil 4. This is for the this is for the Oculus Quest 2. Yes, I believe yeah, for- so. So that's kind of a big deal just because if it's for the Oculus Quest 2, that means it is running on the headset, which means they, they actually had to port it over. It's not just like PC version as VR yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. It's it's very much a yeah. brand new thing. Um, and also the Mark Cerny thing, because they had just like people pop in to like celebrate um, the uh, 25th anniversary of Resident Evil. Mm-hmm. So they had they had Mark Cerny show up and he was like, very soft spoken like i'm so excited for resident evil and i hope it runs great on the playstation 5 and that and he had the word. like konami or the kojima luden in the background and everything and then next they had who's he's the was he the former president of sony Barack obama <laughs> <laughs> How about layton no no no, no no the japanese guy Oh, Shuhei Yoshida? Yes, yes. He was there, and he's always great. And then the next person was someone from Naughty Dog. Michelle Obama. Yes, Michelle Obama from Naughty Dog was talking about it. And then, I I don't know if... I, I was no 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 it was some lady it who was, was the like flute guy it was the Japanese flute guy <laughs> yeah, it was Japanese. but it was just this weird assortment <laughs> of people punch. like it's like two minutes before the stream they were like oh we did we send those invites out 
It's like, <laughs> who can we get to talk about Resident Evil? And it's just like a mishmash of people. And they had Michael Huber from Easy <laughs> Allies, and he was yeah. just screaming the whole time. I am hype for this. So hype. Anyway. It's just sorry, Jeff Gersman, and he was just hitting his soundboard the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, 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 boom. Um. Anyways, it was a weird. Oh, I can do that. Do you want me to do it again? Oh yeah, yeah. Hit it. Hit it. Oh, nice. that's very good. Um. <laughs> yeah, it was just a quick stream. Like it was interesting to see Resident Evil Eight trailer, but Capcom's trying to do this weird thing where they're like building up the Resident Evil brand in like a way where it deserves its own showcase which i don't think it does um they also showed off that re verse game again quickly which looks like an absolute nightmare no um, one cares about yeah. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> yes it's also i found this out the other day doing research that it has been pushed into steam's bottom 250 games <laughs> wow. because people have review bombed it so hard um, um yeah, it's not even so, out yet exactly um how can you, wait, how can you review it <laughs> welcome to the internet <laughs> um yeah it was a weird showcase but uh, i watched it so i figured i might as well report on it um but that's that uh moving on ian tell me about should i just you want me to just you want me to just quick hit these and then we can get to the the list of greats uh yeah quick hit i love the okay, quick, quick hit Age of Empires 4 may be coming this fall, according to a rumor. Uh, PlayStation mm -hmm. Leaker has another rumor saying that Sony's Xbox Game Pass is going to be similar to how Apple does it, where they are not necessarily uh, revealing a new service, but bundling services together, such as PlayStation Plus, PlayStation Now, and Crunchyroll together. Again, a rumor. Bethesda has released Mighty Doom, which is a one-touch shooter on Android. It's an early access, and no, you shouldn't play it. Uh, NVIDIA <laughs> had stated in their stockholder call that GPUs will remain scarce through the rest of 2021, which, yes, means the entire first year of these GPUs being out. Good luck buying one. Uh, the next Minecraft update has been delayed slash split. Uh, it's the Caves and Cliffs update. They've essentially split the feature list in half. Half of it will be in the summer update. Half of it will be in a fall update. And finally, actually, no, not finally, second to last, Unity will be adding native DLSS support soon, which means any game made in the Unity engine will have support for NVIDIA's basically magic tech that allows you to super run. awesome. Yeah, it, it lets you run a game at a higher uh, render resolution and better performance, which is insane. Um, and finally, Nintendo had an indie showcase. Honestly, it's just a lot of small announcements here. Ali Ali World, Art of Rally, Fez is out now on Switch. Oxenfree 2. Just a lot of there small was, indies. There Oxenfree was one that grabbed my attention, which was the Labyrinth City Pierre the Maze de Detective. Do you see that one? Mm -mm. It looks... I don't think that was on the US no, one, was it? Yeah, it, it was at the was very almost. end. Here, I'll send this to you guys. Oh, there it is. Labyrinth City. Okay, I see. It, it looks now. so cool. Yeah, it's like a Where's to... Waldo like game. Yes, yes, that one. Looked yeah, good. I'm very into it. Yeah, the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game also looked very good. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The yeah, part I... where there are a bunch of ninjas working in an office, the turtles come up and they get out of their desk, pull ties off, and then fight the turtles was very <laughs> funny. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I'll have to go back and watch it. Also, House of the Dead, great remake. That makes me happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah remake. Uh, so a lot, a lot of good, a lot of good uh, indie small title in that uh, showcase if you want to give that a look that's great thank you for the quick hits Eow. um folks uh we are gonna put a game on the list we gotta put a game on the list i don't have a game prepared uh but one of you better prepared. have a game prepared okay i have a game prepared so, so, wait the last time i was on it could be any game now it has to be a game we have played recently right it is no. still any game any okay game. Yes. So anyway. I think we need to talk about and put on the list Cyberpunk 2077. Ooh. So actually, you know, before we do this, Will, how about you give us uh, the rundown of the list? Sure. Um, currently, number one, Outer Wilds, 
Number two, Yakuza 0. Number three, Doom 1993. Number four, Prey 2017. Number five, Shadow of the Colossus. Six, Horizon Zero Dawn. Number seven, Battlefield 1943. Number eight, The Outer Wilds. Worlds. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> number nine, the worst <laughs> game of all time. Uh, Brink. Uh, not the Disney movie. Uh, so what we do is we add a game every week. This is the definitive list of games. We also have amendments. We add amendments for, on occasion. There's also the MOBA quarantine zone. Uh, that's a whole separate thing. Uh, they're quarantined <laughs> for now. We hope they don't get out. Um, okay. Ian has submitted Cyberpunk 2077. David, if you had anything on your mind, uh, I'll uh, if you want to submit something. You know what? In uh, in honor of the Mass Effect's Legendary Edition coming up, I say Mass Effect 2. Oof. Oh. Oh, so we gotta go to bed at some point because I'm prepared <laughs> to argue that piece of shit into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized I <laughs> I posted that link in the self promotion channel of Save Data, not our chat. <laughs> I just realized that live on air um mass effect 2 great game um okay let's start with cyberpunk number 10 cyberpunk 2077 you know it's tough to say because it is definitely more broken than brink in that brink at least ran it was heavily dependent on multiplayer servers and multiplayer matches but you could get in those matches Cyberpunk 2077 is a PS4, Xbox One, PC game, and it flat out does not run on PS4, Xbox One. I tried to play it on an Xbox One X, which is by far the superior, best performing console of the last generation, and it did not run well. It, it, it ran so poorly that I didn't want to play it on that console. Um, it did not the function on the platforms they had been advertising for like five years. <laughs> On, on two thirds of the platforms that it released for, it, it was not functional. However, I will say there are parts of that game that work and work pretty well. I think there's some really cool characters in there. I think there's some really good story moments. I think that parts of the combat are great. I think it nails the aesthetic and there's some really good side quests going on. But that execution is not even. There's a Here's lot more area where it's off. PlayStation yeah. delisted. <laughs> Yeah, PlayStation yes. didn't delist Brink. No. But Brink Brink is a working game, but it is a very shallow not gr not a lot of fun to play game whereas Cyberpunk is like Cyberpunk is like bouncing between two extremes whereas Brink is just like and I think I'd rather play Brink than boot up Cyberpunk 2077 again. I have not played either, and I would rather boot up Brink. <laughs> You're totally right, though. I would totally I know, play Brink right, right now. <laughs> Touch Cyberpunk again. Damn. Okay, yeah, let's throw it at the bottom. <laughs> that's, that's, that is such a solid argument. I'm telling you. Ian didn't think it was going to quite go <laughs> Brink when he said it. That's crazy. <laughs> I can't really the worst game of all time so far. Cyberpunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh um okay mass effect 2 i can't ah. fantastic game it is a ian fantastic is game fantastic. yeah but ian ian hates good things and listen I, I, I have given, i've given this game a shot i have literally played the first hour of this game four times on four separate occasions with years in between them i keep going back to it and going maybe now i'll appreciate it but the voiceover is mediocre. The animation is god awful. The cutscenes are god awful. The controls and the UI and the fighting and the movement is god awful. So sure, maybe the story is great, but it the gameplay is bad. I've played it on PC and I've played it on console, and it's, it's just I never thought like, any of those things were that. Bad. Yeah, I sure. I mean, like the oh. animations for a long narrative game with like a ton of npcs talking and stuff i don't expect them to be like godlike especially from bioware but like for the time all that stuff was good <laughs> i don't think so because when yeah. did this game come out when did, when did Mass Effect early 11 2010 there are plenty of great games mass effect one was 2007 
Mass Effect 2 was 2010. 2010. Okay, so I'm going to look up best games of 2010. Here we go. Red Dead Redemption. It's a that good game. game. Control's great. Great great UI. Fallout New Vegas. Control's great. great uh, <laughs> it controls better. It controls better than Mass Effect 2. No, it does not. No, it 100% Super, does not. Super Mario Galaxy 2. Limbo. Halo Reach. There are games contemporary yeah. with Mass Effect 2 that do not have like the basic functional issues of Mass Effect 2. But I don't like, think Mass Effect 2 has those make, basic functional I issues. Think I think you've made those up. I don't I don't know if you guys have tried to play it recently because I think I tried to play it again like two, three years ago. And it's... I played it's it last year. Wonky. It's and fine. Five ish years ago and I thought it was fine. Sure. I it's, mean, I played it when eight. it came out too. Yeah. So let me put it this way. Where would you put it on this list then? I'd put uh, it above Prey. Above Prey? Oh, do, do you want me to send you the link? No, I'm, I'm looking at it. Okay, to. I can put it in uh, the self-promotion channel of safety. <laughs> <laughs> How is Shadow of the Colossus below all that you guys are fucking doing? <laughs> what the hell? Uh, we have to introduce an amendment where we can rehash things. <laughs> Oh my, see, because, oh man, this list is a whole Trash. mess for me. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine that feeling. You look at a list and you're like, why is this jumbled? <laughs> <laughs> I would rearrange like, almost everything in this list. We don't, we don't have time to rehash it, but I will, no, stand no, no. By, I will stand by this list because for every single time we put something in the list, we had very good arguments and it was very it's considered. True. And a lot of times it was like, both of these are great, but how are they great? And how much are they great? And how great were they at the time? I mean, and that's Doom, kind of the original game. Doom's not fun anymore. <laughs> and that's, that's But it was mostly for what it did versus <laughs> Prey yeah. was an achievement um, of everything that happened, but Doom was an innovator. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I mean, me personally... It that much. It's just prop hunt from Team Fortress. Um... I would put it above Prey. Personally, I would put it above Doom, but I don't think I'll win that one. So I don't think you'll win it with Ian. I mean, I could see the argument, but I put let it me, above let me, Prey. me personally, I would put it above Brink. But <laughs> <laughs> I know people's I know people's attachment to it. I know people's attachment to it. And it sounds like it should be above Horizon Zero Dawn. For sure. But below Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, I don't know. But I don't think it's... I think... Uh, See, I think... Like, when, people talk, when people talk about that game, they talk about the story and the RPG elements. But nobody ever says the combat was incredible. Oh, combat was super fun. Nobody says, oh, oh. and the, the acting is amazing. Nobody says it had just really great, innovative controls that I never struggled with. Like people don't like people are inadvertently cherry picking the best parts of that game. I mean, you know, I that with all the Shadow of the Colossus had some of the worst controls in a video game ever. And it's still that's like, why, why, but, but that's why it's down here. That's why Yakuza 0 is number two, because nearly every element of that game is incredible. So that's why I'm saying it should be... I don't be... have an opinion on Yakuza 0. I haven't played it. Um... That's why I'm thinking it's below Shadow and above Horizon. Because it has some very fantastic elements, but there are other elements of it that are just very tough to, tough to handle. I would like Shift, Shadow, and Mass Effect both above Doom. Oh. So, I mean... I'm fine Doom's anywhere incredible. between 6 and 3. Oh, uh, you will. I, I think it's better than Prey 2017. I mean, I'm in the same boat as you on that. So you guys are thinking between Doom and Prey? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. If I can settle putting it between Prey and Shadow, if you feel extremely strongly about it, Ian. I... Well, let me put it this way. I've tried to play it four times. My final time trying to play it is when I play through the Mass Effect remasters. Um, so I'm willing to give this up if I am allowed to shift it around 
after I have beaten the game. Yeah, uh, we can. I will allow you to re. We will rehash the argument if you play and beat the game again. No, or, no, no, no. Look, look, I know this gives me a lot of power, but I, I will take this fairly. If I play and beat Mass Effect Two, I get to move it to anywhere on the list. Okay. If anywhere? you play and beat Mass yes, Effect Two. But let me put it this way. This is part of it is trusting me, but the other part of it is if you believe this strongly in this game, then I should be swayed by the time I hit. No, 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 no. I don't believe that strongly in your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> in my ability to judge the game. I mean, I would have to hold a grudge through the whole game. But but that's the thing is that if I really, really hate the game, then I'm gonna well, have I to guess, I guess you have to beat it. it. Yeah, I have to punish myself through it just that's to true. grudge move it. That's fair. All right. I would rather not do. Okay. Yeah. So we'll put it at four. It's at four. It's between Doom and Prey with an asterisk next to it. Pending <laughs> pending Ian beating the game. <laughs> what a God. This is awful though. I just put like a giant giant weight around my neck. Yeah, like are you even did you play the other Mass Effects or I played the first six hours of Mass Effect one and I didn't really enjoy it. I didn't think it was awful, but the combat was just like Mass bad. Effect One's combat age was the worst out of that. Yeah, yeah. and sure. and the elevators were awful. Like I played <laughs> it when it came out, and so I dropped yeah. it. Yeah, and then Mass, but Mass Effect Two for some reason, literally, I cannot get past sixty minutes of that because it's just like stabbing my eyeballs and my thumbs, and I'm just like, this feels god awful. So I'm excited to give it hopefully a better. I've I've heard they've updated the controls, at yeah, least for they one. Have. I'm not sure especially. About it. They did the most work on one because it's everyone acknowledges that one feels awful in modern times. Yeah. So I'm I'm ready to give it a chance. Okay, folks, we got a new list on our hands. The best game ever, according to us, Outer Wilds. Number two, Yakuza Zero. Number three, Doom 1993. Number four, Mass Effect 2. Number five, Prey 2017. Number six, Shadow of the Colossus. Number seven, Horizon Zero Dawn. Number eight, Battlefield 1943. Number nine, The Outer Worlds. Number ten, Break and the Worst Game of All Time. According to us, Cyberpunk 2077. It's a good list. Very justified. <laughs> It's the perfect list I because just love we're the logic behind it. The perfect people. <laughs> Would you oh rather play Brink or Cyberpunk? Oh god, yeah, I'd rather play Brink. Yeah, <laughs> I can't believe that one. I, and I, I'm, I'm not even saying that as a bit. I would honestly rather play Brink than play Cyberpunk 2077. I, it's Eight. like, yeah, I said it as a bit, but as I said it, I'm like, no, I agree with that. You should tweet that. Oh, that's yeah. a good idea. <laughs> Hashtag Brink. Let's check Outriders. Um, yeah, we can't put Psychonauts on this list. Are you crazy? It's not low enough yet. <laughs> Next time. Oh, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played it. I don't know. Okay, uh, let's wrap it up here. Let me start start the sweet, sweet music. I'm sorry. Real quick. This list is actually perfect right now because this means that Mass Effect is a solid 7, which I, I would agree with. Because it starts at a 10, then it goes 9, 8, and then it's a solid 7. <laughs> oh, I hate it. I hate that it. Means Outer Worlds is like a 3. That's not right. Yeah. <laughs> it is right now. Uh, folks, we had a good time tonight. We talked about a lot of cool things. We talked about the games we've been playing. We talked about fixing technical issues. We talked about fixing life issues. Like putting Cyberpunk 2077 below Brink. Because Brink is a better game. Joining me today was Ian Gibson. Ian, thank you for joining me. Uh, and joining us here. Because you're you're one of us. It's just so crazy to it. say that <laughs> and know inherently that it's true that <laughs> Brink is a better game than Cyberpunk 2077. It is. I'm going to text my friend from high school who I haven't talked to in years to tell him he chose the right game when he bought it and no one else did. It's incredible oh. we have to we literally come across pieces of truth, objective truth like that. It's insane. We're perfect, perfect people. Infallible. Also joining us tonight was Save Data's David. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's always good having you on after Chris because it's like a palate cleanser. 
Uh, it's just, it's just so much better. Yeah, it just Chris makes guy. makes everything better. I gotta hurry up and go download all this crap. And then the one time I switched the recording to 640, so now I can't even use the recordings I made to make the videos. I have to wait for them to process and download them. But at least I can put the podcast up and you can listen to this with your sweet ears. Folks, the song is running out and we are running out of time. You can find all of our content at subpixelfilms.com or Subpixel Team on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and anything else you want. But until uh, then... Real quick, multiple parties are trying to buy Square Enix. Multiple parties trying to buy Square Enix. Folks, we'll see you next week. <laughs>